The topic that we are going to look today is simple interest. So, in order to solve the sums in simple interest, there is just only one formula you need to know, which is nothing but simple interest is equal to P and R by 100. So, what is P here? So, P is nothing but principal, N is the number of years and R is the rate and divided by 100. So, you should know this formula to find the simple interest. So, what is basically a simple interest? So, let's say you are going to put rupees 1000 rupees in a bank and then you are going to keep it for 2-3 years. Then the interest will be same for each and every year at the end of the year. So, that is the difference between the simple interest and the compound interest. In case of the compound interest, what do you do is that the whatever the interest that you get accumulated at the end of the year plus the amount will be taken for the next year. Whereas in case of the simple interest, the same principal amount that you consider will be there for each and every year. So, let's take a small example. Let's say I'm going to put 1000 rupees in a bank for a year at a rate of 20%. Now, you're going to find the simple interest. So, simple interest is nothing but P and R by 100. So, principal is 1000 rupees, number of years is 1, rate is 20, divided by 100. Nothing but 200 rupees. So, the interest at the end of the year is nothing but 200 rupees. Always N, if you see, it will be represented in years. Let's say in a sum, they are going to give you as 9 months. Then in that case, how you have to represent it is 9 by 12. So, always remember N will be in years. This is where a lot of people make mistakes. Another thing is that, so new amount is equal to old amount plus interest. So, old amount is nothing but 1000 rupees plus your interest is 200 so at the end so new amount is equal to 1200 so at the end of one year you will have the amount as 1200 how you will get so you have initially put 1000 rupees in a bank at the end of one year you are getting an interest of 200 rupees so together this is 1000 plus 200 which is 1200 let's solve couple of simple sums to understand this concept better so the first question is how much time will it take for an amount of rupees 450 to yield rupees 81 as an interest at 4.5% per annum of simple interest? So first let's write the given data. So the given data is they have given 450 to yield rupees 81. So interest is nothing but 81. Principal amount is nothing but 450. At rate I have given as 4.5%. The question that they have asked is how much time. So, they ask us to find the number of years. So, how to find it? Let's write the formula. Simple interest is equal to P and R by 100. So, they have given the interest is nothing but 81. P is nothing but 450. N we have to find out and rate is 4.5 which we can write as 45 by 10. So, already 100 is there. So, we can write 45 by 1000. So, let's take all everything to one side. So, N is equal to 81 into 1000 divided by 450 into 45 so 9 5s are 9s are 200 9 5s are 4s are so it's nothing but 4 years so at the end of 4 years the amount 450 will yield an interest of 81 rupees at the rate of 4.5 percent so how did we do that we have got all the data the one that we have to find is n so whatever the data that we know we are taking it to one side and finding the unknown so let's solve another sum to understand this concept better so the next question that they have given us a sum of rupees 12,500 amounts to rupees 15,500 in four years at the rate of simple interest what is the rate of interest so as we know that new amount is equal to old amount plus interest. So, we know 12,500 became 15,500 in 4 years. So, new amount is 15,500 is equal to old amount is nothing but 12,500 plus the interest. So, in order to find the interest, what do we do? 15,500 minus 12,500 which is nothing but 3,000. So, we know that interest is nothing but 3000, the number of years is nothing but 4 years, we know the principal amount was nothing but 12500, now we have to find the rate, easy right. So, what do you have to do, simple interest is equal to P and R by 100, interest is 3000, principal is 12500, N is 4 years 
rate is the one we have to find divided by 100. So, take all the unknown to one side. So, R, R is equal to 3000 into 100 divided by 12500 into 4. Cancel. I do the 25, 600, 1 are 150, 5 are 36. So, rate is equal to 6%. So, at the rate of 6%, the sum of 12,500 becomes 15,500 in 4 years. Today, we got to know the basic concepts of simple interest and couple of sums to understand that concept better. So, in the upcoming videos, we will be solving much tougher problems to understand this concept much better. The topic that we are going to look today is simple interest. So, let's get started. So, the question is, what will be the ratio of simple interest earned by certain amount at the same rate of interest for 6 years and that of 9 years? So, they have given the same rate of interest. So, they are asking you to find the ratio. So, for 6 years and 9 years. So, ratio 1 divided by ratio 2. We have, with the simple interest we are going to do, which is nothing but PNR by 100 divided by PNR by 100. For 6 years and 9 years. So, what is the principal amount? We don't know. What is the number of years? We know it's 6 years. Rate is common, so you can take it as R divided by 100 divided by principal we don't know number of years is 9 r is same divided by 100 as we know the same principal is the one that we are going to take for 6 years and 9 years we know p is also same and r is also same so it can be cancelled pr and 100 is also cancelled so it is nothing but 6 by 9 which is 2 by 3 so the ratio is nothing but 2 is to 3 so, this is a very simple and a classic problem. So, what you have to do is that though they didn't mention that principle is same or not, a lot of people get confused whether we have to take it as P1, P2 or something like that. But we know that the simple interest is earned for the same amount for 6 years and the 9 years. So, the P will always be the same here though they didn't mention explicitly in the question. So, P and R gets cancelled. So, easily you can find the ratio. Let's go to the another sum. So the next question is, a person borrows rupees 5000 for 2 years at 4% per annum simple interest. He immediately lends it to another person at 6 1 by 4 per annum for 2 years. Find his gain transaction per year. So let's find his gain first. So this can be fine by finding the simple interest between the person he immediately lends to minus the initial simple interest he earned. So PNR by 100 for the first thing minus PNR by 100 for the second. So, we know the principal amount is 5000. Number of years is 2 years. And the rate is 6. 1 by 4 can be returned as 25 by 4 by 100. Minus, again PNR by 100. So, 5000 into number of years is 2 into rate is 4 divided by 100. So, let's solve this. Cancel 2, 25, become 6, 25, minus 8, 400, become 2, 25. So, this is the gain value that he has attained for 2 years. So, in order to find the gain transaction per year, which is nothing but, we know it for 2 years is 225, divided by 2, which is 1, 1, 2.5 rupees. So, the gain transaction per year is nothing but 112.5 rupees. So, the basically the mistake that a lot of people make is that they will find the value to the 225 rupees and stop it here. And you will know that in the option there will be 225. But read the question again. They are asking it per year. So, you have to find it only for one year. Let's solve it for another question. So, the next question is a certain amount earns simple interest of rupees 1750. After 7 years, had the interest been 2% more, how much more interest it would have earned? So, in order to find the simple interest, we know simple interest is equal to PNR by 100. So, at least 3 variables must be known in order to find the 4th variable. Here, if you see that the principal is missing. So, if the principal is not there, we won't be able to find the accumulated value for the number of years that they have given. So, here... The answer is nothing but data is inadequate or insufficient. 
But in order to confuse you, there will be another three four option which will where the answer is given. But once you know the concept better, you know that without the principal, you won't be able to find the simple interest. So that's very clear to you. Directly, you can select the option data inadequate. In today's video, we dealt with the different types of problems which you might face in the simple interest type of sums. In the upcoming videos, we'll be dealing much tougher problems in simple interest, and we'll also have compound interest as a part of our aptitude. So if you are a person who is looking for a job, kindly register in our freshersworld.com. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.